PID is an effective and simple controller for many mechanical systems. I hope the following examples and tuning procedure help you apply PID to your system. In the first demonstration, the PID controls a VEX EDR through a series of 180 degree turns. The updated desired heading is sent to the robot at a rate of 10 times per second. The sequence of heading commands is plotted in red. The commands change from 0 to 180 to 360, then back to 180 degrees in steps. The robot responds by changing its actual heading to match the desired heading. The response is plotted in blue with crosses marking each updated response. It takes approximately one second for the robot to complete a 180 degree turn. We're going to do a series of 180s. In the next trial, we move the robot from a carpet to a concrete surface, which allows the robot to turn with less drag. The control parameters remain the same as used on the carpet. However, the robot turns 180 degrees easier and has a slight overshoot in the turn. Let's watch. All right, now we're gonna run a series of 180s using the carpet parameters. See a little fish tailing. In the next demonstration, the heading commands increase in frequency. The robot at first follows, then falls behind. The increased overshoot in the middle of the graph demonstrates a resonant frequency for this particular build. Toward the end of the plot, the robot is 180 degrees out of phase. Let's watch. All right, now we've, we're doing the chirp. The uh, BD is equal to zero, there's no derivative. The KT is back up to one, which it was for proper running with the squares and the 180s. And you can see here the jerking, it's wheels aren't getting traction. And so it's too responsive. In the next trial, we change the control parameters to add drag or damping in the software. It mimics the damping we had in the carpet. We have the same control command sequences as before, but the additional damping allows a better controlled response. No resonances occur, and the car reasonably matches the command directions. The delay between the command heading and the actual heading is due to time needed to transmit the request and receive the response as well as mechanical inertia which resist any change in position. Let's watch. All right, we're going to do a chirp again. We're going to leave the KP equal to 1 for large excursion and we're going to have the derivative in there. Notice that you're getting good response. And that ends it. Now I have a puzzle for you. In the upcoming trial, each command requests a heading change of an additional three degrees. The result is a linear change in actual heading. So, what's the path of the robot? Let's watch. This time we're doing a circle. The linear change is a function of time. The next three trials control a second motor, motor 2, to make its encoder value match encoder value of the drive motor, motor 1. If the encoder values match, then the average motor speeds match, and the number of axle rotations match as well over the time of the trial. In this case, the error is dt, the difference in the encoder values. The control parameter V is the sum of three components, P, proportional component, I, integral component, and D, 
derivative component. We need to write equations to change motor behavior to minimize V. I try the following. The power in the slave motor, motor 2, is equal to the power in the drive motor, motor 1, plus the term V. V varies to minimize the error dt and match the encoder values. I will talk more about the components P, I, and D in the tuning section after these three trials. Okay, now the left wheel is the lead wheel and the right wheel tries to follow the left. So I'm now going to start the program. And you can see they started up right away. That's going to go from 60 to power 30. And then back to 60. And if we do it correctly, the encoder, encoder of the right and left wheel should be very close together. So let's look over here. That's what the, well, I'll get this. There you go. That's what the screen looks like where the uh, wheel that's following is blue and it overcompensates and then comes in. And then when we go down to 60, it remains in. Go back up to 30, it remains close in terms of uh, power. And in terms of the final encoder numbers for the two, we get uh, 9834 and 9840. Now this time, instead of going 60, 30, 60, we just started up and stayed 60, the power of 60, the whole time in the lead wheel, which is the left wheel, and uh, the right wheel then was blue, overcompensated, and then came in. And if you look at the final numbers after uh, the whole length of time, we've got... Um, 11,404, 11,405 for the encoder. So that's excellent tracking. All right, this time we're going to have the left wheel at a power of 40 for the whole trial. And then for the right wheel, I'm going to put my hand on it and put drag on it. So it's kind of like cruise control going up a hill where the engine has to work harder. Now, in this case, it'll motor on the right hand side will work harder in order to make the encoder on the right wheel uh, maintain being close to equal to the one on the left. So let's give it a whirl and see what happens. So here we go. We're going to start with the left wheel going at 40 and the right wheel is going to try to tag along. Here I come. Let's see what we get. Here you got, you can see the power to the uh, right wheel is increasing every time I put drag on it. Okay. And uh, I did that quite a bit, as you can tell. Let's see if I can get this so it's square. There you go. Yeah. And then uh, here is the uh, numbers at the end. We have... Um, the uh, right encoder is 88.53, and the left encoder is 88.74. Not perfect, but very close. To understand tuning, we need to understand these coefficients. Kp, the proportional coefficient, Ki, the integral coefficient, and Bd, the derivative coefficient. Another variable is the error, dt, which is equal to the desired value we want to control minus the actual value in the system. The examples I gave so far were to minimize desired and actual heading and minimize desired and actual encoder values. There's a lot of writing here, but most are just comments. We have four simple equations. The first defines P as kp times the error dt. p gets larger as dt gets larger. kp defines the rate that p increases with a given error. 
i is a little different. In this case, the new value of i equals the old value of i plus ki times error. If dt is small and remains the same sign, i will continue to increase or decrease depending on the sign of dt. When dt equals 0, i remains constant. Component i was useful in the middle trial of the previous three trials matching encoder values. In that case, the drive motor was under a constant or steady state power of 60. The slave motor power varied by V to minimize dt. Component i continued to slowly change to reduce that error. And by the end of the trial, the difference in the encoder values were 11,405 minus 11,404, a tiny error indeed. Component D is not a function of DT, but of the change in the actual positions between updates. D is negative for a positive difference. What we are measuring here is the change in position as a function of time or velocity of the object we are controlling. The faster the object is moving in the direction requested by P, the larger the magnitude of D becomes with the opposite sign. The magnitude of control parameter V decreases with increasing velocity. Think of P as the spring of a suspension system and D as the shock absorber. The shock absorber minimizes bouncing in a car. D dampens oscillation of the mechanical system around the desired position. How do we tune the robot system to be appropriate for our robot? First, we need to write equations that use V to move the robot toward the desired position, where V is minimum when the robot is at the desired position. And of course, V is minimum when the error dt is equal to zero. In the encoder examples earlier, we, we wanted the encoder values to match. In the following set of tuning examples, we want the heading of the vehicle to match the desired heading. SC is the desired power to the wheels when the error is minimum. DT is defined as the desired heading minus actual heading. In this build, the power of the left wheel is defined to be SC minus V and the power in the right wheel is defined to be SC plus V. And, of course, V is the sum of P, I, and D. With the equations relating V to wheel powers determined, the next step is tuning. Set KI and BD equal to zero and find a suitable starting value for P. We use an abrupt and large change in the desired heading to tune our controller. We start moving at a heading of zero then abruptly change the desired heading to 90 degrees for a few seconds. We watch the behavior of the robot. We increase P until we get an underdamped oscillation around the desired value of 90 degrees. This happened when KP equals 1.5. When we set KP equal to 1.5, we got this behavior for the step change in direction. Note that the vehicle turns more than 90 degrees or overshoots, then undershoots, then overshoots, and so on. Let's watch the video of this trial. T2 oscillation. In step two, we decrease KP to obtain approximately one cycle of oscillation. This also increases response time from 0.5 seconds to 0.53 seconds to reach the first crossing of 90 degrees. The result of step two 
is to get a graph like this one. With KP equal to 1 and BD still 0, we get this response. The weaker KP combined with the natural damping in the system brings the oscillation down to just over one period. This can be seen in the video of this trial as fishtailing in the turn. All right, this is T1. We now augment the natural damping with some software damping by increasing BD to 1.7. We now have a small overshoot and no undershoot. While looking at the graph, count the number of updates to get to the first crossing. I get 6 or 0.6 seconds. The video with these parameters shows a quick and accurate turn. Okay, we have the proportion, proportionality constant 1 and the derivative b equal to 1.7, and that was a great turn. As an alternative, we can set bd to 0 and further reduce kp to get no overshoot using only the natural damping. However, the turn takes about 1.4 seconds to complete. For both a quick and accurate turn, both KP and BD play important parts. Tuning will actually take more than two or three tries while changing the three parameters to get what you want. But it's not hard to finally arrive at the right values of KP, KI, and BD for quick and stable behavior. It is good to know that when you get the controller to work well for abrupt large changes, it will continue to work for smaller and less abrupt changes as well. Remember the circle path for an example. If changes in the system behavior are frequent, like driving through a maze, KI may be best kept at zero as it was throughout this tuning exercise. But in a steady state operation, give KI a small value and the component I will slowly change to compensate for system bias. I wrote a paper with more details about PID controllers, how to tune them, and some software using PID. Go to this website and search for terms VEX EDR XB PID.